Hello, everybody, and welcome back to position 25 of my complete chess endgames course. Now, I'm going to throw a wrench in these rook endgames because honestly, I'm just kind of getting tired of studying them uh, and going through them. There are more, uh, we'll get back to them, but I'm going to cover something. These are, these are two of the positions. And I'm going to combine them just as one here uh, for clarity, and I think they go good together. So this position is one that you really need to know, and I'd say it's more important than knowing rook endgames, uh, because you'll get it quite a bit in practical games. And the reason I'm showing these is because I've actually seen, uh, just watching Blitz on uh, online as well as in my own games, that you really need to not only know these this uh, position I'm showing you here, with the queen and black and the pawn about to promote, as well as the final result objectively. So this is basically the worst position white uh, wants to be in with a queen and a king versus uh, the black king and the pawn just about to promote, and both the queen and the king are all the way over here in the corner. So pretty, pretty much a nightmare position, but actually uh, white to move, obviously a black to move, he just queens and then it's a draw. But with white to move, this is actually one. White is going to have to do a lot of work here. Uh, if you want to pause the video and try to calculate the method, but let's get into it here. So basically the method that white has to use uh, to prevent black from queening as well as allowing white to get his king over and mate, which he really does need to do uh, in order to support checkmating the king as well as preventing promotion of this pawn. So the first step is to check, and if black makes it difficult, he's going to basically make white check him onto this square. Now the, the main method you need to know is that white needs to keep checking black until he blocks his own pawn, and then when black is blocking his own pawn, uh, white will use that tempo to get the king one step closer. So let's see how that is in action. Queen d4. Now uh, the king has to go back, check, and now we see the first move, the king starts to move closer. So it's a lot of work, um, but you need to be able to do it quickly, because a lot of times these endgame positions come when you're in time trouble, when it's the end of the game, or even in a tournament game, uh, you might have to make uh, 20, 30 moves in order to finish off your opponent if you have this position. So the key here is just to keep checking. If black moves away, you just check, check. Now if he comes here, you win the pawn and you're good. And again, you can also pin the, uh, the pawn and force black to move, either here or here. Uh, now if he goes here, you can just move the queen and then that's even easier. You just bring the king over. Um, if he makes it difficult, comes back, check. Again, we get the same blockade of the pawn by black. And white comes over again. Check. You can also attack this pawn and force black to come back and then just check like this. And now white is getting closer and closer to finally mating black, pinning the pawn. Now if black uh, just comes up here, then white can just simply come over and we get a mate. If black makes it a little more difficult by playing here, we see check. And actually, it'll be mate next move. We don't even need to take the pawn because black steps in to the checkmate. So this method is really important in uh, positions where black is just about to queen. And I'll show you the initial position. So I'd recommend that you not only uh, know how to use this method, but practice against a computer to be able to do it in, I'd say, 20 seconds, 10 seconds, uh, because these moves need to be automatic, and you need to know the method in your bones, I guess you could say. All right, we're going to move to the second position. So before I get into the specific subtleties of this position, um, I'd recommend you pause it and try to figure out if white can win uh, or if it's a draw. So I'll just get right into it. So for black to move or white to move, it's a draw either way. And there's a subtlety we'll get into here um, that black needs to know as a defensive player in order to get a draw um, if you get this position as black. 
All right, so let's see what happens here. If white tries to just check and black tries to hang on to the pawn, then actually white can use the same method. Um, but this, obviously this requires a mistake by black. So we're just seeing some moves. Now the correct move by black is to simply play king to a1. And this is the subtlety I'm talking about. Now if white just takes, then white is covering these three squares and it's a stalemate. There's no move by black. So black needs to be aware of this idea in order to get a draw. Um, now if he's really trying to hang on to that pawn and goes king to c1, then he's going to have some problems. Even at this point, uh, black can still save himself with king to a1. But if he's really making the wrong moves here, let's see, king to c1. And now actually, um, this would be the last move. Mate doesn't even need to take. And it's the same idea as the previous one, but it obviously does require a blunder by black. Now you need the pawn here in order to win because then the black king doesn't have an escape file <laughs> off the page. Um, so these two very important positions here, I would recommend that you study them with a computer and practice them until you can get them instantly as both white and black to defend yourself too. So you don't just have to resign. There are some uh, blunders that your opponent can make. All right, so hopefully this video helps you understand some more endgame positions. Uh, I'm just trying to cover, I guess, more practical things. Um, I will get through all these positions, but uh, I don't want to be making a bunch of boring videos all in a row. So I do consider uh, these positions much more practical and interesting, and they are included in the positions. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in part 26 in the future. Bye-bye. <laughs>